Hello and welcome to my session. My name is Dr. Nestor Sylmana and I come from Finland. Uh, this session is called Abusing Azure Active Directory. Who would you like to be today? So let's begin. Uh, here are our sponsors. Just a minute like this. So here are our sponsors who made this conference possible. Although it's an online conference, but anyway, we really need those sponsors. Agenda. So basically, we have two things today. So first one is uh, just basic background information about different identity options in Azure AD or Office 365. And those who doesn't know, the Office 365 is a software as a service uh, provided by Microsoft. And it includes things like uh, Office suite, uh, OneDrive, Teams, and that sort of things. And in the background, there's Azure AD, which Office 365 uses as an identity provider. And for storing various information regarding that, that Office 365 environment or tenant. And the other part of the presentation is about how you can create three different kind of uh, backdoors to Azure AD. And how I'm going to do this is using my my module called AAD Internals, which I developed during, let's say, the last couple of years. And the module is a Postal module. It's mostly script only, meaning that you can open the script and see how everything is done. And it's mostly because not everything I could cre uh, create with Postal, so I had I have had to add some DLLs for for a couple of functionalities. But anyway, the module is for administ administering and hacking Azure AD and also some Office 365 elements. It's open source, so there's a GitHub page. You can download the code to see what it is. And there's also quite extensive documentation is in my blog, o365blog.com slash AAD internal slash. And I and I tried to make this module very easy to use, so it's available in Powerful Gallery. So it's just one command to install it and another one to import it. And then you can use the commands. Well, let's move forward. So let's start with the identity and authentication options in Azure AD. And the first thing is that um, nowadays when we are living in cloud era, so to speak, our, our identities are in cloud. So when you try to, when you need to protect them, you really can't use those old school methods like, uh, like uh, isolating your networks and using firewalls and that sort of things because you can access cloud anywhere. And for instance, you can use Azure AD as an identity in many services, in uh, in the. Uh, App Store, there are at least 3,000 applications nowadays you, which you can use out of the box like um, uh, Salesforce and that sort of things. So when you have this one identity, you really need to protect that very well. Okay, so my customers have asked me very, very many times that is the cloud safe? And I, I can say that yes, it is safe. So uh, I could say that no one has better protected environment that that um, Microsoft has. Well, maybe Google also have, but anyway, when things are in cloud, you really can't just walk into the uh, data center and pick a hard drive and run away. So you really can't do that. So I would say that yes, the cloud is safe. So there are only, let's say, one thing that you can, uh, how you can penetrate the, let's say, security in cloud, and that is that you have the credentials of user. And how you, how you really, how, how can you get those credentials so you can use phishing campaigns, or then you can use uh, password, password spray attacks, so you try to guess uh, users' passwords. But that's the only way. You need to know, know the user's username and password to be able to access the cloud. And if you use an MFA, that's that's even uh, more unlikely that you could do it that way. But how safe 
the cloud actually is. Uh, let's see. Well, let's go to identity options now. And there are two kind of identities in Azure AD. And first one is managed, which means that authentication is performed by Azure AD. And I mean the authentication part, which, which is a method to recognize the user somehow. And here are also two kind of things that how you can uh, uh, perform the authentication. Against Azure AD means that your username and password both are stored in Azure AD. So you can be a cloud only user where you just create a user in the cloud and that's it. You set the username and password and, and you're good to go. Or if you want, you can also synchronize your users from your on-prem environment and, uh, and you can also synchronize those password hashes, which is called uh, password has synchronization or PHS and in this case uh, you can use your same credentials that you use in your on-prem environment meaning that because they are synchronized from your on-prem to cloud you can use same username and password or you can perform the authentication against your on-prem AD even though the user is managed and how this is done well, there's a technology called pass to authentication or PTA, which means that there's an agent on your on-prem server that connects to cloud using service bus, as a service bus and waits for uh, authentication request. And when the user goes to the cloud, types username and password and hits the enter, uh, the password goes to your on-prem server and it's validated against your on-prem AD and then the result is uh, returned to cloud. And the other identity option is federated, which means that authentication is performed by external identity provider, which uh, with uh, identity provider as already trusts, which typically is your on-prem AD. And this means that as already really doesn't perform the authentication, but redirects you to your identity provider and then return with security token but we will get back to that later okay uh, there have been some as already best practices uh, available a while now and here are some of them and if I just highlight the three first there which say that it's best practice to integrate your on-premise directory to Azure AD and also it's a good good practice to turn on password has synchronization and enable SSO which stands for single sign-on and why do you do these kind of things well to make users easier so it's easier for users to use cloud so that you can have your on-prem credentials working also in cloud and if you have SSO enabled you don't even have to give your password so you are locked in automatically but uh, when you are using those best practices you are actually poking holes to that secure cloud environment because you have to connect your on-prem network to, to cloud and this kind of is problematic in a way that now that your hacker can act the hacker can actually try to attack your on-prem environment and and gain access to cloud through that so now we are getting back to the let's say old school protecting because now it's really important that you also protect your on-prem environment if you are using cloud services and if you have integrated your on-prem environment to cloud so now actually in the cloud era we, we really need also those traditional uh, skill sets that how you can protect your on-prem network so we could say that your cloud is as safe as is your on-prem environment and this is important okay now one uh, concept or tool that we are using with uh, identities as already is called as already connect and that's a piece of software which is doing a uh, these kind of things. So first of all, it synchronizes object from your on-prem 
AD to Azure AD. So that's the main purpose. There's also write back for some some information if you like. For instance, Office 365 groups can be written back to your your on-prem AD. You can do password visits from from the cloud to your on-prem, and you can synchronize devices, device information back from Azure AD to Active Directory. And also, you use this tool to configure your Azure AD tenants authentication options. Okay, so I have a demo environment here. This is actually the same environment I, I have used in Black Hat USA and Europe in 2019. So that's why we have these blackhat.myo365.site names. So what do we have here actually? We have a, let's see, do we have, no, not that one, but that one, yes. So we have a on-prems environment here where we have two servers. There's DC, which is a domain controller or AD server. Then we have server one, which is used for synchronization and, and federation services. Then we have Office 365 tenant here, which is connected to to our on-prem environment. So we have the same domain part here. And then we have one one server here which is uh, outside the network. So this is my hacking server or computer. So it's not connected to neither the on-prem environment or the cloud environment at all. Okay, so let's move forward and we start with the first backdoor, okay, which is called password authentication or PTA. And what is the purpose of PTA? So I kind of uh, already told you that. So the purpose of this is to allow users to use their on-prem passwords in cloud. And there's no need for extra hardware. For instance, if you compare to federated identity, which uh, best practice is to have at least four servers, two for ADFS and two for proxies. But here you really don't need, if you have Azure AD Connect, the PTA agent is installed on that that server by default. So <clears throat> about the authentication agent, so as I already told you, the one or the first one is installed in Azure AD Connect server and for high availability, if you want to do that, you can install one or more agents and one per server. And those servers should be domain so well, they have to be domain so so that they can perform the authentication actually. And the agent connects to Azure AD service bus, GUI, and uh, Q, and waits for the authentication things. So if there's a message, I want, this user wants to authenticate, and this is the password, it, it actually tries to log in in that computer where the agent exists or is installed. And just returns the result from that. So configuration goes like this, that you install the authentication agent and then you give your admin credentials, uh, cloud admin credentials, and then it installs the authentication agent. It registers it to Azure AD and then starts the service. So how this actually works is that uh, when user tries to log in, a new authentication request is added to the queue by Azure AD. And then the agent fetches that request. And the username and password are passed to Win32 API called Logon User W. And it either returns true or false. Or then uh, some error, if, if there's any error, like uh, logging restrictions, for instance. But the Azure AD doesn't check whether the agent is actually running on the correct domain, or is it running in a domain in the first place. And uh, I was able to implement this functionality thanks to Adam Chester's blog. There's a URL for that, so check also that. So, if you want to exploit this, what do you actually need? You need a, a compiled DLL. It has to be 
It had to be in C or C++ because you couldn't do things in C sharp. Same things that, that was uh, necessary to this to work. So you need to create your custom implementation about this function log on user w and uh, the implementation custom imp implementation I created it actually saves the credentials to a file uh, in a log file and it always returns true so that anybody can log in using any password as long as the username is correct you can use any password and you you kind of create a backdoor this way then you need to create a trampoline functionality to hook your logo user w to our implementation okay and then you have to have this dll and inject that to authentication or agent process running in in your server so time for our first demo so let's close this one and open this so <clears throat> now we are running in server one which is our server with uh, Azure AD Connect. And if I open the services here, there should be somewhere here called Microsoft Azure AD. Well, actually, I haven't configured that yet because that was part of the demo, so let's do that. So we open the Azure AD Connect <coughs> wizard here. And what we want to do is to change the authentication. So change user signing. I need to enter the credentials to cloud. Like this. Yes, and now I deselect that one and then select pass to authentication. And again deselect the single sign on and hit the next button. And now it start the configuration. And that shouldn't take more than two minutes or so. And in the meantime, I can clean if there's any anything from my, from my previous demo. Oh, yes, I have. So. What it? yes okay so let's see how this configuration is going on pretty well I guess so now it's enabling the password authentication in cloud and that's it so let's see I have a example here so I'll try to sign in and then I give it the correct password no actually that's not the correct one sorry that should be yeah one more time Okay, let's see if the service is actually started. Because that might take some... There's the authentication agent. It's running there. Okay. So that should work. But for some reason it's not. So let's try again. That's better. No, the service wasn't actually started yet. Yes, so now I can sign out. So the PTA is working now, All right? Okay, now uh, I have uh, installed the AAD internal module here already, so I'll just import that like this. Uh, actually, I already seems that I already had it imported. 
anyway now uh, we are running as a local admin in this server so if I say who am I it says that you are this guy called uh, BH USA in the blackhead domain and uh, now as a local admin in this server I can install things so what I want to do now is that I will install the AAD in PTA spy like this and ask are you sure about it and I say yes I'm sure about that and now it's installed right so I have a process hacker installed also here so that I can show you that the DLL is actually injected here so as a D it's that one I guess No, it's not this one. So where is it? Where is it? Uh, so AD connect. No, that's the update. Sorry about that. So there has to be another one. That's the correct one. Yes. And here we have the PTA spy. Right here. So now we can see that the uh, function was successful so the DLL was in, injected to that running process there and now we should be able to log in as any user we want to so let's try again but this time I just want some long password so let's go to well I can just copy this one here just any text I put it here and hit the sign in button and the user was not able to log in and why is that i don't know let's try again uh, the servers are actually located in in us so there might be a too long delay which may explain that one okay let's go and see what's going on in here i'll just try to install it again so there we are there we are there we are here it is that's the current one so i just restart that like that actually now I think I might know what's wrong here oh <laughs> let's do this again yes so I have a second server here server 2 and it might be running in this server actually so I'll just check that if I have it here installed oh yes running right here so I'll just uninstall this one and that should do it because now it's um, in high availability configuration which means that half of the request roughly went to this computer and a half to another one and I just forgot to uninstall this after my last demo so sorry about that but hey this is how it goes there might be some demo effects every now and then and that was it let's see if there's anything left here or oh, we can get rid of that too and that should do it okay now let's go back here and it should be running here just double check that one And we 
have the PTS by right. Okay, now it should work a little bit better. Okay, now just type the long password here and hit the signing button. And done. No. Now, that's better. So it again took some time to be applied and then I sign out. And now when I go back to my computer here, it's the server here, there's a command called AAD int and PTS by oh sorry, PTS by log. And now it's it shows that okay this guy has logged in with this password. And there's also the timestamp. And if we want we can also give the user switch decode password so they now it's decoded. And just to make sure that you this really works, let's try logging with another password, let's say one. And we are in again. No I should not press that button. And now I try to get the log again. Now we can see that the user logged in as a password one. And that's how you create backdoors. Now, but this is a, let's say, okay uh, way to do this. Meaning that uh, if you protect your on-prem environment very well, uh, then this shouldn't be able to do. So just make sure that your local admins doesn't do these kind of things. So you really protect your Azure AD server uh, as a, well, you should, you should keep it as a um, tier zero server. So it should be at least as well protected as domain controllers. Okay. But now the tricky part here is that if you have a, admin rights to, to the cloud. What you can do is that you can install the agent, I've already downloaded in here, in your own computer. And if I... Who am I? It shows that you are a BHUSA user in server 2 and this is not connected to that environment in any way. But if you have a if you have a admin rights to the cloud, you can register this agent on your own server. Okay. So I'll just show you that how to do that. So you install the agent here in your own computer. And you need to have the admin rights. like this. And then you can install that PTS by but I just need to remove those. Just a minute. old logs. Now I'm going to install the AAD in PDS by and yes. And now you have your backdoor in your own computer. And now it's in high availability configuration which means that every now and then you will have those requests so you can use this to gather credentials. Um, and just for demonstration purposes I will shut down the service in the, the server 1. Is Microsoft Azure AD connects authentication agent so that it's that one. So I'll just stop that service. And I'll sign in again. And I use the password two and profit. We are in again. Okay. 
Good, so now if I go to server 2 and I pd in pda spy log with decoded password switch, I will get the password as a plain text. Yes. So this was the first backdoor you can you can create there using Azure AD or AAD internals module. So let's get back to our our presentation right here. Okay. So the next backdoor I I'm going to introduce you is a thing called seamless single sign-on or the technical name is desktop SSO. And what is purpose of purpose of this? So the purpose is to provide single sign-on to the cloud using Kerberos, which is the uh, same technology you used in, in your internal network if you are logging logging into a server or using let's say internal SharePoint server or anything. They are using Kerberos. And some concepts related to this so well this actually related to Kerberos but anyway so we have a key distribution center which is typically uh, or not typically it is your domain controller actually and there are two services there's authentication server where you authenticate yourself and then there's ticket granting server which grants you tickets Kerberos tickets so that you can log into services and there are two types of tickets so first is ticket granting ticket which you get after you have authenticated and then if you want to use some other service you need to have service tickets and then we have a concept uh, service principal name or SPN which represents the service and it's also a computer account in AD so it's a kind of a same as user but it's a service in, in this case so if you want to configure this so you you are using AAD Connect for configuration and what it actually does is that it enables seamless single sign-on in Azure AD it also creates a computer account called Azure AD SSO ACC in your local AD and it also creates a service principal name which is attached to that computer account and it also configures Azure AD with the computer account name and password because that's how it works that the Kerberos works that um, well actually I will get back to that later so this is how how the authentication flow goes so first the user goes to domain controller and request for ticket rank, ticket granting ticket or actually logs in then when it wants to use the service it needs to request for service ticket and when it cuts the ticket pack with that you can actually access the server and uh, how or why this works is that the KDC here or or the domain controller knows all the passwords or, or all the secrets and when the user logs in here and wants the service ticket, the service ticket is actually um, it's uh, encrypted using the password of this server here. And when the server gets back the ticket, it can decrypt the ticket because the server service also knows its password. So that's why, because when we are configuring this this uh, seamless single sign-on Azure AD must know the password of this service here or server here so that the, it can actually decrypt those uh, Kerberos tickets so how this authentication flow goes well first you try to access Azure AD with browser as an example and it prompts for username then you provide your username to Azure AD and Azure AD recognizes you that okay you are actually using this seamless single sign-on so it redirects you to this URL or server or to log on Microsoft Azure AD-SSO.com 
and because in your AD there is a service principal name for this, it, it understands that okay now you need to log in to that server. So when you get this negotiate challenge, the browser acquires Kerberos ticket against the AD, and then it can authenticate uh, to that auto -log logon URL back. And then when you enter that service again, you have a Kerberos ticket there in your request. And when that's OK, the autologon actually returns a authentication code. And with that code, you can authenticate, authenticate against Azure AD and you will have an access token, which you can use to, to access services. So that's how it goes and how, how it works. So with this Inside this authentication process, you are using actually SP Nego token, which is sent by the browser to Azure AD after, or the auto logon service after you have logged in, uh, sorry, authenticated in, in your AD and have, if you, when you have reserved that, that token. So, but what it contains. So, first of all, there's a real, which is your, your domain name actually. And inside there, there's this actual ticket. And this ticket is encrypted using server secret. So the AD knows the server service secret or password, and it decrypts that. And inside that, there's a PAC or PAC, which stands for Privileged Privilege Account Certificate, which contains information like logon time and user and domain seats. And then there are also two checksums. So first one is server checksum, which is calculated using the server secret. And another one with AD secret, but we really don't need that. And there's also a thing called authorization data, which is encrypted using session key, which was inside that actual ticket. And it was, it was um, encrypted with the Server secret. So this kind of data is actually sent from your your browser to as already auto logon so that you can log in. So how this authentication is performed then? So this is how it goes. So as already checks that the server checksum is valid and it is using that password which we sent to Azure AD during the configuration. It also checks that the timestamps are valid. So, so lifetime for for Kerberos tickets was like what is it, like three minutes or something like that. And uh, it also checks that the user with matching SID or security identifier exists in Azure AD. However, it doesn't check what is the user's name, what's the user display name, what's the principal name, what's the server name, what's the domain name, what's the real name. Azure AD doesn't care about those. So actually, when I'm creating those. <clears throat> Kerberos tickets or, or tokens, these are all X's. So use, instead of my username, there's XXXXXX. So that's just for, to demonstrate that the Azure AD really doesn't care about those. So in order to exploit this, you need two things. There has to be some uh, so seamless single sign-on must be enabled in Azure AD. You need to know the the computer account password. So that's one thing. And the last thing that you need to know the user's SID. So security identify. Okay, so how we can do this with uh, our AAD internals. So let's let's show you that. And <clears throat> now I'm logged in my uh, own server here so this is not connected to the actual domain and what I want to do is that I I need to now configure the uh, the single sign-on so I need to enable that and in order to do that I need uh, I need an access token so that I can access the ser service because all the functionality these admin things are actually using uh, REST APIs 
And with that service API, you need to have that access token so that you can actually use those services. So let's just check that if I I have the credentials saved here. Yes, so I have a username and password saved here in, in variable. And now I'm going to go and fetch an access token so that I can configure those SSO services. So I just save it in a variable and get AAD int access token for PDA because it's using the same same service. Now I just provide here a grid like this. And now I have the access token. And just to show you that we have actually the working uh, token. So read the AD in access token and give that access token as a par parameter like this. So it tells you that, okay, this is the service we are using. And this is the tenant that uh, authenticated me. So that's the my demo tenant. And I'm the this user here, and <clears throat> and that's it. So now get AAD in. Oh, sorry. AAD in desktop SSO, well, which was the technical name for this, and I need to provide that access token so that I can actually list those. No matter. And I can see it's not enabled. So. Now I want to enable that. So first I I need to enable that. Yes, that was the first command, like this. Like this. So now I turn the switch in Azure AD that okay now this is enabled. Just to make sure, yes, now it's enabled. Now we need to add at least some domain here. And we give that access token. And then we need a, oh, sorry about that. We need domain name. And we can use anything. Let's say psconf.eu as an example. And then we need to set the password. Let's say abc easier to remember and we set enable to true and we also no here because this command is used to change the password if there's an existing one and in order to, to, to things to work you should also reset the computer account password but now because I'm not connected to that domain anywhere I just answer no and then we can list again this and now it says that yes we have a domain there one psconf.eu and it's enabled so let's see what happens if the user tries to log in now so we have this same user here and I click sign in and I let's try it yeah, well, actually, yes, because it really doesn't matter because whatever type here, because we have this uh, PTA thing enabled there, it is actually using that one. Uh, I have also a client computer here, so this is actually where I should use this demo. And now I'm logged in and in a computer which is a domain joint so I can do we have a Chrome here no we don't so we we're gonna use edge okay now what does this mean portal.office.com Oh. I really shouldn't be using the well I should always clean your demo environment so 
so I think I'm using proxy here for some reason, so I'll just... Oh, yes. Now it should work a little bit better. So, portal.office.com. So now it, it says it's trying to sign you in because now it's using this uh, desktop single sign-on or seamless single sign-on, but it's not able to do that. So it should ask your password. So this is an opportunistic way to do. So it tries to do that, but if if it does if it's if it's not going to be able to connect this to this, it just doesn't work. So it asks you for password. Okay. I'll just keep any password because we have this PTA backdoor there. You can plug in like this. Okay. So from the user point of view, it seems that okay. It, does something fishy there but anyway it asks you for password like it like it has always done so you might give your password and you are able to log in okay but that was how users say that but now if i go back to server 2 here now if i would like to log in as another user and do something as that another user you had to have that uh, single sign-on enabled, check. You need to know the password, yes, check the ABC. And the third thing is that you need to have the user's seat. Now, how can we get the user's seat? Well, just for an example, I, I'm going to log in to, to uh, cloud as an admin user and list the user from there, so just for example. But if you are a member of the domain, you can always get any user seat if you want. Now, I'll just use the connect as array D, which is a normal, let's say, admin tool from Microsoft, like this. Now it says type the get msol no so get azure ad user azure ad user and I'll it says format list but I only select user principal name and on prem no sorry so on prem security identify so now, whenever there is something here, we can log in as that user. So we can create tickets for that use. So let's try this just me, for instance. So I'll just copy this. As you can say, it's actually faked because if you want to, you can set this to anything you want to, as long as it's a properly formatted seat. So I can set this to any user. And then I can, uh, if the user doesn't have seat, meaning that if it's not uh, synced from your on-prem to, to cloud, it doesn't have seat like this external user here, but I could set this similar ID to this user and log in and that, that user also if, if I would want. Okay, so now I have all the information I need. So let's open a or create a new file here okay there was actually many of them already no nope. uh, no uh, yes so that's the seed for the use <clears throat> so I want to create a Kerberos ticket so let's say this new AAD in Kerberos ticket we give the seed string here. That was the one thing we needed to know. And then we need to password. And password was ABC. And now we have the ticket. Now, with this ticket, you can actually get access tokens. So, AAD internal sub supports that you can fetch uh, working to access tokens using this Kerberos ticket. So let's say 
Kerberos access token. Get AAD int access token for AAD graph. And I give that Kerberos ticket. And now if everything goes as it should, I will have a... Oh, it actually asks also the domain so that it can log in. Uh, correct place to log in, so I'll just give the black hat my old 365 site. Okay, and there was no error, so I should have a working uh, access token. So let's see. Read AAD int access token and pass this as a parameter. So nothing. Okay, so no, oh, it's a KA, KD. Yes, so now as we can see, we were in able to log in and this user using this uh, faked but still valid Kerberos token. And now actually with this you can let's say you could do like this Kerberos token for let's say uh, exchange online the same Kerberos ticket if it's still valid. I always forgot the domain. Yes, it was. So now again with this, this as you can see, you can use it for Outlook, Office365.com, and here are all the things you can do. So you can, in personal user, you can read all the information. You can send email and, and so on. So actually, with this. You could now send email as a user, for instance. There are functionality for, for that also in AAD Intel. But anyway, that was a second backdoor, so that you can use this desktop single sign-on to, to uh, log in as any user you want to. So let's go back to our presentation. And for the last part which is identity federation. So purpose of identity federation is to enable using on-prem identities in cloud and also if configured correctly you can use that as a single sign-on with Windows integrated authentication so it's not using Kerberos but uh, Windows internal authentication. And here are the couple of concepts. So we have service provider which in this case is Azure AD. Then we have an identity provider which in this case is your on-prem AD. They are security tokens, which are uh, tokens that ha contain information about the user. In this case, it's uh, SAML or security assertion markup language token. Now, when you configure this with Azure AD Connect, it does following things. So first it creates an ADFS farm. It creates a self-signed certificates for token signing and encryption. And these encrypted, uh, this, sorry, these uh, keys are encrypted and stored in a configuration database. And the encryption key to decrypt those keys, it's stored in an Azure, uh, sorry, AD object. And it also protects the HTTPS with the given certificate, so it's not created, but you have to provide one. And it also adds Azure AD as a trusted party in, in ADFS and configures uh, claim rules, which basically add the locked in users UPN and your on prem AD object ID to the security token. And then it configures Azure AD, so it converts a selected domain to federated. And it also configures the domain with the ADFS information, so it it's, uh, sets the login and logout URLs, it sets its URL and also public key of the token signing certificate. Which means that when the ADFS creates that token, it's encrypted using, using the token signing certificate, uh, the private key. So when it's sent to Azure AD, Azure AD can decrypt that, that message or actually verify the signature using the public key. And 
there are two two authentication flows and the, the typical service provided in it initiated which means that when you try to access the service like here uh, the service provider recognizes hey you are you are using federated domains so go go to your identity provider for authentication and then you go here and then you uh, you will get back a token and then you will access the actual service here but you can do it also another way around that that you can uh, identity pro you can do it in identity provided way so actually this means that user authenticates first to our identity provider gets the token or the, the security token or SAML token and with that it access the service and this is actually what uh, what AAD internals is, is using the last last version here okay so what does this SAM assertion actually contain? So there's the audience, which means that there's a service provider. Then there's issuer, which is the identity provider. And there are certain attributes like UPN, which stands for user principal name. And then there's uh, immutable ID, which is a base64 encoded AD object ID of that user. And then there's a signature. Now, uh, how the authentication is actually performed. So as already checked that whether this issuer matches the federated domain and the issuer is actually unique. So you can use one issuer only once. Um, it also checks that whether the public key matches the federated domain, if the signature is valid and if there's a user with matching immutable ID also known as cloud anchor but it doesn't check that the whether the user's domain matches a federated domain so that's good for from our point of view and it also doesn't check that the domain is federated well actually this is not anymore true because Microsoft has fixed this so there's a so we can't create factors so easily anymore we still can do that, but not that easily. So, how to exploit this is that you need to have at least one federated domain in the Azure AD. You need to have the certificate for that federated domain. You need to have the issuer, and then you also need to know the target user's immutable ID. Or it can be also in, in other uh, attribute called ms-ds-consistency GUID. But now let's demonstrate. <coughs> Sorry. And I start by by doing this as a local admin again. So I go to server one here. Now and now I don't have any access to cloud whatsoever. So I'm just a local admin of this server where the ADF service is running. So. Uh, let's see where's where is my everything just close that down there's the server manager and from here we find uh, ADFS management Yes, so, so here are the relaying party trust, as you can see, it says that there's a Microsoft Office 365 identity platform, and if I go here and, and edit claim issuance policy, and double click here, we can find those claim rules that whenever now user is logged in, logged in it adds user's principal name here. So, sorry, the immutable ID here, so which was the, the user's AD object ID. And another rule here is that it adds the uh, user UPN to this, uh, to this uh, SAML token. Okay, but uh, 
what I need is now the certificates of that that uh, ADFS service, but I can't export those because they are non-exportable and they are uh, they are encrypted in that configuration database. Now, if we are using a local configuration database, there's a command here which you can use to just go to desktop first, like this, and you can say that. Uh, Get AAD in the token. No, no. Export AAD in sign in certificate. And I just hit enter like this. And there are our ADF sign in certificates. Now, if I copy this and go to my uh, bad, bad, bad server here, I can just paste it, paste it here and, and we got it here. So, <clears throat> just go to desktop. Now I can, I have this uh, certificate, and the other information I needed was the the issuer URL of the verification service. And let's see how I connect MSO service and like this. So this is the uh, the old uh, admin module for, for Azure AD, but it still works like a charm. And what I want to do is to get MSO domain. And as we can see, there's uh, one federated domain here called White Hat. And it's also verified, so we can actually use this. So get MSO MSOL domain federation settings. And domain name is white hat like this. And here we should have the issuer somewhere. It's where URI is that one. So that's what I, what we are needing. Like this. Also we need users uh, Immutable ID, so I can say get MSO the user and select user principal name and immutable ID Oops, like this. Okay, I couldn't get that right, and let's get format list so that we can have. Yes, so now we can actually log in as any user we want to here. So let's say like this, Diego, like this. So I can say open AAD in Office 365 portal. Well, username doesn't actually matter. There's no, because it's not checked in any way. So I give the immutable ID, then we need the issuer here, which would be like this. And by the way, this is not the white hat which is federated, it's black hat, so it's a different domain, but we can still do this. And now what we need is a PFX file name, which, and I have to give the full you full full path and there was this ADFS signing certificate and because I exported it there was no password whatsoever so when I hit this what it does it actually creates a, a temporary HTML file where where is uh, one link which sends the SAML token to Office sorry Azure AD authentication service. So when I click like here, it goes there and, and because it's signed with the correct certificate and the correct information, it actually can log in just like this. Now I'm logging as a Diego, even though I don't know Diego's passwords or anything, I only have that certificate. So that's the way to do backdoors. 
Well, actually, that was not great impact or because that was just a just a legit way to create SAML tokens because those were the correct certificates. Now, this this is not a bug uh, per se, except for the fact that you could log in as a different as a user from different domain that doesn't even have that uh, federated identity. So. I guess that was, that is a uh, bug. But also you can set this immutable ID to anything if there are users that are are not synchronized from your own environment. You can set that like here. I'm set ABC, so I can show you how that works. So immutable ID. I just say ABC and hit the enter. And that button there, I'm locking and lock uh, as someone. <clears throat> so that's kind of interesting how this actually works. Yes, uh, but now <clears throat> that was a legit way that so that if you are a a, a local admin, you just export those and you are good to go. So if you have access to those certi certificates, you can do this. But again, you should always protect ADFS servers also like tier zero servers. But now quickly, I will show you how you can also create that uh, backdoors. If you have a um, global admin rights. Okay. Now first I say that convert MSL domain to standard, so I convert that that uh, white hat domain to standard, so that it would be managed like this. And what uh, password file? It, it's not required to anything. I just to say this. Ah. Yes, sorry, can't do that because I'm not locked on on any domain computer. Domain authentication, domain name, is white hat, and authentication to manage. Yes, so now it's not any more federated. But now, what I can do is, uh, do do I have? I need to get a token here. like this and credentials and I get the grid. So I need an admin access to Azure ID so, so that I can do this. So now what I'm gonna do is convert AAD in convert convert to AAD in backdoor and I if the access token, I need to have a domain name, which is uh, that one, and that's it. Yes. So now, what it does that if there's any domain that is uh, available for use, you can convert that to backdoor by by telling the, it that okay, now this is a federated domain. So now using the same example as we did earlier. Where is it? Open AAD in Office 365 portal. So immutable ID ABC. And I just tell use built-in certificate like this. And I can also use bypass MFA. So you can actually use this to bypass MFA for real. Now when I hit, oh, I also need that issuer because that's another one now, like this. So now we should have everything in place, right? No. Because when I'm using the bypass MFA, I need to provide there some value and this would be true. Like this. 
and we were able to log in again. Now, that was the actual creation of backdoor. Yes, but let's get back to to presentation. I'm running over time here already, so so here's a su summary slide, and uh, the slides and demos will be available from that address. Here's some information about me. If you want to uh, learn something more new about this, don't hesitate to contact me, and don't remember to attend the next year Powershell conference in Hanover, Germany, in June 2021. Thank you very much.